As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on tools and parts I use in today's video today. Oh, don't watch that list. We got a 2012 Nissan Rogue. Gonna be doing the rear pads, and I'll show you how to do the rotors. I'm not actually changing these because these are fine, but I'll show you how to measure them and take them off as well. Let's check it out. All right, here we are at the back of the car. I jacked it up in the middle right there. Make sure you always use jack stands. You can see how good I'm doing with that. You can actually, you can put a jack stand right up here and it's like your little jack spot right there. And then once you've done that, 21 millimeter lug nuts. And I know these have like a wheel lock. Your wheel lock should be center console, uh, glove box, or, or if it's not there, it'll be with your, like your spare tire and stuff. So good. Take your 21 millimeter lug nuts off and we'll pull this wheel off. And then we'll be looking at our brakes. And what we've got is a 14, a 14, and then what I believe is a 17, and another 17. He's hiding right there. And for this top 14, I'm gonna take a wrench because this hose is kind of in your way. And then the bottom one, you can use a ratchet or a wrench or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna take my little 14 gear wrench. I already broke this one loose. And oh, it's actually gonna go this way. But to break it loose, I just set it there, pop, pop, pop. And then you can break it loose. I'll show you on the bottom one. Boom, it's gonna be like that right there. And then you'll just see I'll go, boom, broke it loose. And then I'm gonna take your Milwaukee 3 8 of the 14. I'm gonna try and just zap them off even around that brake hose. It's close enough. Again, you don't want to put too much stress on this line because you don't want to end up having to replace this little line. It's not that big of a deal, but just inconvenient. So now, come down here. There's that. So now, We'll just pull this out. We'll set him off to the side. And then you should be able to, I always like to uh, kind of pull forward a little bit. I just compressed the piston when I did that. And I'm gonna kind of lift him up. And now you'll see we've got some clearance kind of on that hose. But I mean, it doesn't really matter because you're pulling the whole thing off as an assembly. Now we'll set this off to the side. And let's look at the pads. So these pads are pretty skinny. Not a whole lot of life there. And I'll set it like that. And then, like that, this one, okay, I was thinking it wouldn't have a wear indicator. But anyways, I always set them just kind of like that so I can see which one had the indicator. It's usually almost always the back one, and you can see which side the indicator is on. Because the new pads, I already did the other side, the new pads only came with one pad with an indicator. Which is okay, as long as your slide pins aren't locked up and your caliper's not locking up or anything. They should wear pretty evenly, and when that other side starts to squeal, you know, that's plenty, having one indicator. Unless, of course, your slide pins lock up for whatever reason and um, the one side gets to metal to metal. Anyways, no big deal. So, you can do that. We can also, we can replace these brackets right here. Just kind of pull them up, set them off to the side, and my new brackets. For whatever reason, they gave me like 20 freaking <laughs> um, pad little brackets, little pad brackets. So, anyways, you go ahead, stick it in here, and you should just be able to pop it down. Just kind of make sure it's lined up. And then you should just be able to snap it in there. And when you do this, you don't really need to use brake grease because it's a new bracket there. And you're not going to have any issues. Just make sure that the bracket isn't like scooted over so that it's touching the rotor. You shouldn't be able to. It shouldn't allow you because it's got on the inside there, it's got those little tabs which will kind of keep you from doing that. So you can do that. You can also, you know, take your top one off, same thing. Just push the new one in there and then we'll put the pads in. So now we're gonna take our new pads and since neither one has a wear indicator, we'll just go ahead and stick them in like that and get this guy. And we'll come back over here, stick him in, boom. And it's pretty simple, y'all. Just like that, you're gonna want to take some grease and I always have a big thing like this sitting around. They do sell those little packets, but I'm just take a little grease brush, set him down, and then just make sure you, you know, apply liberally, get you a bunch of grease on there. And then we also 
need to, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for that slide pin that's still sitting in there. And we're also gonna to want to compress this piston back. We'll do there. Let's take the old brake pads. Just gonna set it up there. And where my C-clamp is right here. So then we're gonna come in here with our C-clamp. This is what your C-clamp looks like. And you will go ahead and set that up. And then righty tighty, nice and slow. And your piston right there will slowly kind of compress back and it'll be flat and flush. And then once you have completed that, we'll be able to kind of slide the slide pin back on, then stick the slide pin back through there with your caliper on top of your new pads. All right, almost forgot to mention the minimum thickness on the rotor and replacing the rotor. So you can take a set of calipers like this, go ahead and zero it out, zero. Cool, cool. So you see zero millimeters. On this specific vehicle, it's a 2012 two-wheel drive Nissan Rogue 2.5 liter engine. The rear rotors, the minimum thickness is 14 millimeters. So if we see anything greater than 14 millimeters, we're gonna know, hey, this thing's still good. And let's see what we got. Right there, we're looking like 15.7. So that's 1.7 millimeters is a lot left. You could turn these rotors. If you're at like 14.2 it and you're close to it, you may want to go ahead and replace them. You probably won't be able to turn 14.2. You still need some left after you turn them. So to replace your rotors, what you would do, again, I brought a 17 just to make sure, just so you know. Yeah, it is a 17. So a 17 millimeter, 17 millimeter. Go ahead, just like I showed you on the other thing, break them loose, take them off. This, this bracket will come off. And then inside of here is a parking drum brake. So uh, you may have to tap with a hammer there and there to kind of break it loose a little bit. Make sure your e-brake is not applied. And then just with both hands, pull and just wiggle back and forth. Um, pull it off. If you have difficulties getting this off, you can uh, just do a quick YouTube search, uh, fix book drum removal. And you should have like a little video there um, giving you some different ideas to take this off if you're having a hard time with it. So that's for taking the rotor off now. I'm gonna put my pads back on, um, put the caliper on, and we'll see what's next. All right, so now I got my caliper back on, got my um, caliper bolts back on there. We're just gonna tighten them up. I'm just gonna get it kind of tight and then. Now I'll take my wrench and just tighten them the rest of the way. And you just gotta snug them down. Nothing more than snug. And mm, that's it. And our other side. There we go. I'm just gonna snug it down. And that's it. So now put the wheel back on and go ahead and lower it down. I'll use my little, where is it, the Milwaukee gun, 21 millimeter. And then you're gonna want to, if you do use like an electric gun, just take a breaker bar and your 21, make sure you snug all of them down, crisscross pattern. And before you test drive the car, make sure you hop in there, pump the brake pedal until you have brake pressure. If you don't do that, mm, um, whatever's behind you or in front of you, you may hit because that first time you go to hit the brake pedal, it's gonna go straight to the floor. So just make sure you have brake pedal pressure before you go and test drive the car. And the the way you kinda marry the pads to the rotors, um, cause you got new pads on you know new rotor surface, you're gonna take about a good 10 stops from 40 miles an hour. You're gonna stop really quickly and then that's gonna kinda break them in. You may have a little smoke or smell coming from the wheels after you do that. It should just be on the first kinda test drive. So that's it, thanks for watching, see you next time. And guess what? I am only 40 seconds from having a 10 minute video. So I'm gonna show you a cool little technique for putting your wheel back on. So this is the technique. You're gonna take both hands, you grab here with your right hand and with your left hand grab here and then rest your elbows on your legs, okay? And you're gonna be up close. And while you're resting your elbows on your legs, you're gonna have a lot of control over that wheel and you're not gonna be fighting it and hurting your back muscles and all that, and you'll be able to just kinda of line it up, put it on, and then with your left hand, just hold the wheel on, and with your right hand, go ahead and start those lugs, and we are at 40 seconds. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Always 
wear gloves, y'all. Hand helmets. You'll thank me later.